Hi everyone, it's Chelsea from Smoldering Serpents. I'm back. Um, I know it's been about a month since my last video. In the meantime, I went to Canada to visit family, which I haven't been able to do for two years. So that was great. Um, and now I'm back, back into the swing of things, and I am going to do um, our third Meet Our Snakes video. Um, this one is supposed to be the North American rat snake video, but as we were tallying up how many we have at this point, we realized that it was too many for one video. So we're gonna split them in half and do the first half in this part one video, and then we'll do a second one with the rest of the North American rat snakes. So um, I think there's nine or 10 in this one, and there are nine or 10 in the other one as well. <laughs> so. Uh, in this video, I'm also going to give you a quick look at our new snake cage stack, the ones that I've been showing you some progress videos of. Um, the snakes have moved in and they're settling in nicely. Um, so that's all finished and I can give you one final look um, how everything came together. And uh, I think I'll save the sneak peek of the new baby snakes for the second North American rat snake video. It's a Put a little something extra in that one. Um, we have some fresh babies that just hatched that are adorable and very cooperative to uh, to videotape and let you see them. So um, we'll do that in the second part of the North American rat snake video. But uh, for now, we'll jump over to the other room and then I will start with the introductions. Okay, so here is that stack of cages that I had been working on. It's now completely finished. Well, not completely finished. Um, I mean, are they ever completely finished? That's my question, but they are mostly finished. Um, good enough to move the snakes in anyways. Uh, you can see a couple things we still have to add in. There's some uh, guards missing around the lights. Um, only visual guards, the actual cages are of course on there before we move the snakes in, but we do put up some shields so that it's not shining in our eyes the whole time. Um, but yeah, everyone's moved in and doing great. Um, they're settling in, so we don't see them as much as we will later on. Although I have to say this group has been fairly outgoing. Most of them just ate yesterday, so they are digesting. Um, you can see Humboldt though, as usual. You can usually see Humboldt no matter what. He's sitting there basking under his, um, his bulb. Um, so yeah, these guys are doing great in here and over the next few weeks, they'll settle in more. Um, at the top there on the left, we have Jinx, our male Kunisher Island Japanese rat snake. And on the right, we have Jazz, um, our female Kunisher Island Japanese rat snake. So they are side by side, which is pretty fun to see them. They're both digesting right now. So usually they're out sprawled everywhere. They're two of our more active snakes and uh, it's really fun to see them side by side finally. Um, and then down here on the right, we have Eno, um, our yearling white-sided black rat snake. And on the left, the top one is Buttercup, our yearling Taiwan beauty snake. And she's actually, she was pretty shy in her grow out setup, but um, she, we started seeing her gaining confidence in the last few months. And uh, after we added her to this cage, um, she really blew us away. Um, like I said, they've been in here for a couple weeks and she's pretty much been visible the whole time. Although now, of course, when I go to do the video, she's in shed. So now she's tucked herself away, but I expect she'll come right back out when she's done. And the bottom one on the left there is Rosie, our holdback um, yearling hunter and milk snake that we hatched last year. And he settled in great too. He actually has two shelves in there. And Hondurans are very terrestrial snakes. They like to stay on the ground or under the ground. And he's actually been resting up on the shelves, which isn't surprising to us. We've actually found that this, even the species that are labeled as very terrestrial tend to like to be a little bit up off the ground. So it's nice to see him able to, uh, to find exactly where he wants to rest. And then at the bottom, of course, on the right, we have Humboldt and he is our adult male Eastern fox snake and he is very outgoing. He's always everywhere. <laughs> he's a very busy guy and uh, he tends to rest for about an hour and then he's scooting around everywhere for a couple hours straight. Um, I wouldn't say he's exactly restless because he is, he's kind of calm in the way he moves around, but he is always moving. Um, so he's a very enjoyable snake to watch. And then the bottom left is Kovaki, 
um, our yearling male Russian rat snake. And he's also in shed, so he has disappeared completely, but uh, he's been very outgoing in his grow out enclosure. So we expect he will come right back to life when he's done. So uh, yeah, that is that stack basically finished. Just have to add some name tags, a couple finishing touches here and there, but otherwise it came together really nicely. And, uh, and the snakes all seem to be doing really, really well in here. So uh, we'll jump right into introductions now. Um, like I said, this is our North American rat snake group. Uh, this is part one and I decided to split them up basically so that part one is going to be most of the, um, the morph rat snakes that we have. Not all of them, but um, basically the groups that include some morphs. And the second part is going to be more of the locality and kind of oddball single rat snakes. So um, we will jump right in and uh, start out with our first snake. So first up is Nuwata. She is a five-year-old female Baird's rat snake. And I just want to quickly clarify something because I did say that the first half of our North American rat snake group in this video would be mostly morphs. And of course, I started with a snake who is not a morph snake. So just for anyone who doesn't know, when we're talking about morphs in snakes, um, a morph is a simple genetic color mutation that can be predictably produced through selective breeding. So an example that a lot of people are familiar with would be albinos. Um, now, snakes can also carry these genes without expressing them, um, especially like the ones that we work with are usually recessive. So Nuata here is actually carrying the hypogene without expressing it. She just looks like a normal wild type Baird's. Um, and we'll show you what a hypo bears looks like because our male is actually expressing that. So um, anyways, so Nuwata is one of the few in this video who is not a morph. She is just a beautiful wild type Bairds and she is the mother of this year's clutch. And uh, I did make a post on our social media. The clutch didn't go um, super well. She laid six really beautiful eggs. She recovered really quickly and looks fantastic. Um, and the eggs actually went the distance all through incubation, but when they hatched, two out of six had really bad spinal kinks. And we don't want that. Um, those two were culled. Uh, but the other four are looking great. They're big, they're beautiful, they're healthy. So um, first time clutches can be a little iffy, and this was Nuata's first time laying. So we're going to give them another go next year. If we have the same iffy results, um, we'll probably retire Nuata from breeding. Um, we know that Elethar can produce healthy babies. Him and Fea produced a beautiful, healthy clutch the year before. So it, this might be something with Nuata, but um, we'll give her another chance to see how she does. In any case, she is a beautiful, healthy girl. She is the most feisty of our three Bairds. Um, generally, Bairds are pretty easygoing, but I would describe them as more shy than a corn snake and also a little more defensive. Um, so... Nuwata tends to, at worst, musk when we pick her up initially. She does not like being taken out of the cage. Once she's out, as you can see, she's actually really docile. She calms down very quickly um, and doesn't seem to mind being interacted with. But anyway, so yeah, she is the uh, youngest and also the um, most spirited of our Baird's rat snakes, but we love her. She's extremely outgoing in her cage. She's always snooping on what's going on in the room. Um, she has very endearing behavior and a phenomenal appetite, <laughs> crazy appetite actually. But uh, yeah, she's a really beautiful, really great snake all around. And you can see that metallic sheen is also why Baird's rat snakes are often called metallic rat snakes. Next up is Elethar, and he is our five-year-old male hypo Baird's rat snake. Now, I say hypo, but um, for every person who says hypo, another one calls this morph albino. So um, there's basically nothing else like it in the Baird's rat snake species. So whether someone calls it hypo or albino, it is more likely to be a form of albino. Um, but regardless, we all know what we're talking about. And these particular snakes, um, you can see, look quite a bit different from Nuwata. Basically, um, they have a really bright, peachy, uh, orange-yellow background, and where Nuwata had those metallic silver tips on her scales, you can see on Elethar, especially down towards his tail, that he is actually, um, he actually has 
white tipped scales. So wherever the silver was, there is bright white on him. And he's a really beautiful boy. He is just stunning. And he is also incredibly docile. He is basically the ideal uh, personality on a Baird's rat snake. He um, is super easygoing. He actually used to be prone to respiratory infections and we've since realized that it was almost definitely because of the way he was housed. Um, years ago, we used to have our snakes in racks, so he was raised in a rack. And although the tub was quite large for his size at the time, the airflow is just not the same. And we did try adjusting, but nothing we did would really help. And every spring he would come down with a respiratory infection. Since moving him into a larger cage, um, he hasn't had one health issue. So he's actually a really great example of um, the benefits of having larger open air enclosures with proper temperature and humidity gradients. He's just been able to um, be a lot stronger in that kind of environment, which is great to see because it always sucked seeing him get all goopy every spring and now he's just healthy as a horse. So um, yeah, he is, he is one of my favorites to get out. He is just so easygoing and gentle and curious and, uh, and extremely beautiful. There, there are no other snakes quite like him in our house. You can see those beautiful white tipped scales, which I just love. I always thought he looks like a frosty winter sunset. Next up is Faya, and she is our six-year-old female Baird's rat snake. And uh, I made a post about Faya on our social media not that long ago. She's the mother of our 2020 Baird's rat snake clutch, and uh, she went on a bit of a wild roller coaster in the last year and a half or so, where uh, she had a very sharp decline in body condition and appetite. And we did quite a few tests on her, never really found any answers. And uh, regardless, we had a very, very slow and gradual buildup of meal size and frequency for her. And she is now actually just about back to the weight that she should be. So we weighed her this morning and she's pretty much recovered. Her appetite's fantastic. She's bright, alert, she looks great. So I'm very happy to say that she is recovered and whatever was bugging her i don't know if it'll come back hopefully not but for now she is back to her old self and Faya is uh looks a lot more like nuata than elethar does and Faya is also just a wild type baird's rat snake and her colors are not getting picked up well um i took some of these videos on different days and this was one that i took in the morning and morning light isn't that great it puts a very warm cast on everything um so Faya's colors are not being picked up. I also feel like she might be going into shed. She's a little darker than usual. Um, Faya usually has a very uh, deep, rich reddish orange underneath those metallic scales and around her head and neck is very peachy. Um, she's incredibly beautiful. She is brighter than Nuata. She's also bigger than Nuata. She is a year older, but she also has always just been bigger. She's about four and a half feet long and um, and like I said, she's six years old, and I really do feel like Bears Rat Snakes take a full five to six years to mature into their colors. They are a snake that is just better and better with age, and uh, she's now really, really showing those bright colors and, and shiny silver scales. So she's also incredibly easygoing. She's um, not quite as docile as Elethar, but only in the way that she is a little more active than he is when handling. Um, he tends to just kind of sit there a little bit and she is a little more mobile. So um, she definitely doesn't have any kind of attitude. She is just a quick girl when she wants to be, but she is really, really nice to interact with and uh, really enjoyable when she's in a nice big cage too. She is very outgoing and likes to drape across branches. And um, we are looking forward to putting her back in a nice big enclosure once she is for sure recovered and we feel comfortable making that switch um, and getting her back to fully normal life. Uh, she's just about there, so we're very excited to let her get back on track and enjoy life a lot more than the last year and a half. <laughs> Here we have Eno, and Eno is one of four of our white-sided black rat snakes. 
He's uh, a year and a half old, just about a year and a half old, and they all are roughly the same age. So we have three that are siblings and then one that is completely unrelated. So Eno is the biggest by far. He pulled ahead very, very quickly and left all the other ones in the dust. Um, there was a good amount of time where he was um, solidly twice the weight of his siblings. So um, they have since caught up a little bit and we've also slowed him down a little bit. But uh, he is a big, big boy and he's incredibly outgoing. He's actually in that new stack of cages that I just showed you earlier. And he has been just loving life in there. He is perched on every branch, every shelf. He is basking under his light. He is poking his head out to watch us every time we do something. I can go in and open the enclosure and he doesn't even pull back. He is so, so happy in that setup, which is really great to see. He has always been one of my favorite boys. Um, and I'll say that about every one of the white sideds because they are just my favorite group that we have. Um, so white sideds start with a bit of pattern, as you can see along his back, that pattern will eventually fade and the scales basically become just black tipped along the spine. And Eno also has quite a bit of um, freckles along his side, as you can see, which not all white sideds have, although I quite like his freckles. Um, I call him my cookies and cream snake. He just, that or an Oreo, I don't know, but he's just, he's super cute and really, really friendly. Next up, we have a snake that is truly, truly one of my favorites. I know I say that about a lot of snakes, but Shiloh has been my boy since we got him. Um, we initially got him and he was supposed to be a girl. <laughs> um, he came with Eno and he was supposed to be a girl and we always double check the sex immediately and he was very clearly a boy. And the breeder was so kind to not only send us a female, but also let us keep Shiloh. So Shiloh was a total bonus for us and I just fell in love with him. He has a personality of gold. He actually, from the time he was a little 15 gram baby, um, when I open his enclosure, he will come to me and climb up on my hand, which is rare um, for a snake to do that, especially as a baby. Um, you can uh, attempt some training and some conditioning to encourage that behavior, but they really do have to have that in their nature to begin with. And Shiloh has had that from a very tiny little baby. So um, he has always been one of my favorites. He took a while to really start growing and now he's just going through a growth spurt quite quickly. Um, you can see his pattern is a little different in the way that he basically has no pattern along that darker dorsal stripe there. So um, he does look a little bit different. He is a lot lighter than Eno. Um, I think he's just super cute. He has bigger eyes and a bit of a dopier face, but he is just, he is my boy <laughs> and I'm sure he always will be. Um, he also recently got an upgrade to a 4x2x2 two by two cage and he is loving it just like his brother. He is so content in there and uh, is doing so well and I'm excited to see them get to really grow and work those muscles and exercise and um, just have a lot more options in their environment. So it's been a very exciting last few weeks and uh, these two brothers are just loving the upgrades, that's for sure. We always love when we upgrade younger snakes and they don't miss a beat. Um, it shows us that they have a lot of confidence and um, even in their smaller grow out setups, we tend to try to add as much complexity to a smaller space as possible to allow them to explore. And I really do feel like snakes raised in a more complex environment are much more confident and adventurous as they grow up than snakes that are exposed to very minimal type setups. Now that's not to say that we don't use racks. Um, I've had a lot of people assume that we don't, but we do. I think that racks have um, their place in very specific short-term situations. For us, the vast majority of uh, the cases when we use racks are for establishing brand new babies um, or dealing with exceptionally shy juveniles that need some time to work up their confidence. And that's basically how we tend to raise our babies is in very oversized tubs, uh, sometimes in racks, sometimes freestanding. Um, there are a variety of ways that we set them up, but basically we gradually add complexity to their environment 
And then by the time they're big enough to really let loose in a full-sized enclosure, we very rarely have issues. Um, Shiloh here was gradually built up that way with um, his environment and adding more things for him to explore. And the transition into a full-sized, uh, very full enclosure was just smooth and seamless. And so this is his sister, Elara. And Elara is... She's in between Shiloh and Eno for size. She's definitely going through a growth spurt now. Um, she's also going into shed, so she looks a little bit frumpy right now. Uh, typically, her grays have a little more color to it, but she's quite um, she's quite black and white at this point, which they will be as adults, but at this point, Alara tends to have a little bit more of reddish colors in her scale tipping. Um, but anyways, yeah, Alara is a real sweetheart. She has a monstrous appetite and uh, she also had a little bit of a slow start and then all of a sudden it started this growth spurt and um, I don't know where the little babies went, but these guys are not so small anymore. She is the last one to get an upgrade. We are just waiting uh, to do some more musical chairs and empty out another four by two by two for her and uh, she'll be the last one of our four white-sideds to get upgraded to a full proper enclosure, which will be a lot of fun because she's, she's pretty outgoing, a uh, very confident girl. These white-sideds, the group of them in general, are, like I said, my favorite group of snakes that we have as a whole. They are all very, very docile. I don't think any one of them has ever bit me, except for the last one that I'll show you in a little bit here. But of the three siblings here, none of them have given any defensive behavior. They're extremely curious and outgoing. Um, they're just really enjoyable to keep and to interact with and to watch and to see how their personalities develop. Um, they're just really lovely snakes to have around. And Ilara is no exception. Um, She's been in a good sized growed enclosure, but I really do feel like until you get them in that full sized um, decked out enclosure for them to really explore, I feel like that transition lets you get to know them on a whole other level. And um, we've found this with all of our other snakes as well. The second you give them a really big, properly set up enclosure that they feel comfortable in, you get to know them on a whole different level. Their personality takes on a new depth to it. And um, I'm really excited to see Alara in a large enclosure. I think she's gonna be incredibly outgoing and likely visible the vast majority of the time based on her behavior in her grow out setup. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Her brothers have both been that way and I think she will be too for sure. So the last of our white-sided group is our very well-known Bug. And we got Bug as a six-day-old baby um, from a local breeder. We would never send out a baby that young or not established. Um, that being said, we knew the risks. Uh, every year, our job is to get a bunch of baby snakes established and started. So um, the risk is that you get a failure to thrive case where they just don't want to start. And that does happen. It's not common, but it does happen. Um, Bug went through some health issues for sure initially. She could not keep her meals down. We still don't know why that was. Um, but thankfully, after some housing adjustments and eventually just getting her under overhead heat with a fairly complex setup, she actually started thriving after that change. So she has always been a full enclosure type snake. She's kind of demanded it. So she's grown up with a ton of climbing options, basking options and whatnot. Um, she is the most defensive of our white sideds. That being said, she's quickly outgrowing that at this point, um, just under a year and a half old and she's really starting to gain confidence. You can also see she looks a little different from our other three. She definitely has a different type of pattern. Her head shape is a lot more petite than the other three. Um, she's just a different line of white-sided black rat. So I think she's gonna be stunning when she grows up and I'm really loving seeing her personality develop. Our last group of snakes here, these are the calico black rat snakes. And this is Luthien, she is our older female. She's three years old and she's actually going to hopefully be a first time mom next year. Um, she's a funny girl. She is not feisty anymore. She definitely went through that phase. 
Um, she's just incredibly active and a little twitchy. Um, as you can actually see after I'm done zooming in on her beautiful colors, she's actually twitching on my arm. You can see down by her belly there, she's twitching a little bit. Rat snakes do this sometimes. Um, it's usually a breeding behavior, a courtship behavior, but they also do it sometimes um, just when you touch them a certain way. I don't know if it's the same type of uh, reaction to when a male snake touches her. I'm hoping not. <laughs> but uh, a couple of our rat snakes will do this when we're handling them, um, and she is one of them. So she's just kind of a quirky girl. Um, her appetite is unbelievable. She is one of the very few snakes we have who will slam right into the door when you walk by her cage because she saw movement and thought it was time to eat. Um, so she is a bite first, ask questions later kind of girl. Um, you can see that beautiful color is what the calicos are known for and I actually have a terrible time trying to capture that through both photos and video because in person they are so much more vibrant and uh, I will try to walk the line of realistic because either they end up looking washed out or completely oversaturated. Um, hopefully I caught that in these videos. Um, I feel like it came out fairly well. Um, but once you get up close to these calicos, you can just see they basically look like what I think of as like party confetti. They have peaches and, and uh, they have pinks, yellows, oranges black freckles, white frosting on some scales. They're just incredibly pretty. And then on top of that, you can see on Luthien's head, she actually has some dark uh, freckling and shading on the top of her head. And she actually started with a fully white head for quite a while and now these freckles are coming in. So my guess is she's gonna have a nice dark um, gray mask on her by the time she's done maturing. But uh, Luthien is a pretty good sized girl. She's probably about four to four and a half feet long at this point. Um, she uh, went through a little phase where she really plateaued in growth and uh, she looked fine. She, nothing was wrong, but she went through quite a few months where she actually didn't grow at all. Um, but now she's kind of taken off again. So she'll be cooled for the first time this year along with our male Baron and they're gonna go through their brumation and come up in the spring and hopefully decide that they like each other. Um, she's a really sweet girl. She's really, she's grown out of her defensive stage that she went through uh, as a yearling. She was really quite snappy as a baby, but now she's super sweet as you can see. And uh, she's always out. On a day when I don't see Luthien sprawled out in her cage, I know she's either in shed or I would think something's wrong because even right after she's eaten, she likes to just sprawl across the branches with her huge belly. <laughs> it doesn't look comfortable, but she loves doing it. Um, so she is one of our favorites to look for when we walk into the reptile room. This tiny, tiny little girl is the smallest snake of this video. And this is Maple. She is our 2021 female calico black rat snake. So believe it or not, um, that's actually roughly what Luthien looked like as a baby. Um, Maple has a little bit more color and pattern going on at this stage. Baron and Luthien were extremely pale and patternless until probably eight or nine months old when they started getting the very faint hints of color and freckling. So if that is any indication, I have high hopes for Maple because she is just beautiful already. Um, her personality is also blowing me away. She is so confident and calm, even as a tiny little baby. She's only about 15 grams right now. She's still eating pinkies. So she is just this little smidge of a thing, but she will come right up on my fingers. Um, actually a lot like Shiloh did as a baby. So I have high hopes that that personality is gonna continue through her life and that we're gonna be able to foster um, a really great relationship with her because she is so easygoing already. Um, and baby rat snakes definitely have a well-deserved reputation for being flighty or defensive, which is understandable, but she does not have that tendency. <laughs> um, funny enough, she was actually a picky eater. She's very well established by the breeder, but 
um, shipping can sometimes really throw them off and I'm not sure if that was it or what made her decide she didn't want normal pinkies anymore but um, she actually ate every single time once I discovered that she only wanted them slightly boiled which is a trick that we use for fussy hatchlings a lot is you thaw out a pinky mouse and then you flash boil it and something about that smell just they love that and maple <laughs> The second I tried a boiled pinky, Maple was sold. That's what she wanted. Um, we've now weaned her off of that, so she's on just regular frozen thawed pinkies, which is fantastic. Um, and she'll be upgraded to peach fuzzy soon, and then my guess is she'll really hit a growth spurt. But for now, she is just a little princess, and uh, <laughs> I just love interacting with her and looking at her. She is just a little rainbow already. It's little babies like this that really make me love the process of raising snakes. Um, I have no expectations that babies will be like this. She is an exception, um, especially for the species. You know, I expect this kind of behavior from our Russian rat snake hatchlings who are incredibly confident right out of the egg. But for most baby rat snakes, they do not act like this. So when I do find a baby who is so comfortable with handling and interaction already, it just makes me so excited to go through the process of raising them and seeing that personality develop. Um, I, uh, I fully expected her to be a lot more timid, and as you can see, she's really not. She is uh, perfectly content with being held, um, and I don't overdo it. I never handle them more than once every week or so, but she is completely fine with our interactions already. All right, I saved the biggest for last, and this is Baron, our male calico black rat snake. And I really hope his colors come through in the video because he is breathtaking in person. Um, this guy has just gotten better and better and better with age, and he really doesn't even look real a lot of the time when I look at him. Um, his color is a lot brighter than Luthien's, although Luthien does have really beautiful colors, uh, Baron's yellow neck is basically neon, and, uh, and his oranges and peach colors along his tail are just unbelievable in person. Um, Baron has been, um, our boy for as long as we've had him. Andrew and I have just latched onto him from the moment we got him, and, uh, he was very much like Maple as a baby, and, uh, very confident and calm and easygoing, which is very, uh, which makes it very easy to start fostering that relationship with them, even from a baby. Uh, you know, when baby snakes are stressed out just by even a little bit of interaction, you really don't want to push it. It's not worth it. They need to grow up and gain that confidence that comes with age and size. But when a snake like Baron is so okay with handling, even from a young baby, it just means you can start that process even earlier and generally makes for an even more easygoing snake as they get older. So Baron will be going down for brumation in a couple weeks along with Luthien, and uh, we're gonna have to try to not hold all their babies back, although we'll probably want to, but I am very excited to see what the future holds for those two. So that's it for the first part of our North American rat snake group. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure enjoyed making it. Um, while I love all of the snakes that we keep, rat snakes in general, um, especially North American rat snakes, are definitely a favorite of ours, and it's always fun to spend some time with each of them, especially telling you guys about them and getting to showcase their beauty and their personalities. So I'll have the second part to this video out very shortly. I already have most of the videos taken and just need to put it all together. So I will see you guys again shortly.